Welcome to Let's Chat with Julie Lewin in the Trauma Talk series, where together we'll navigate the depths of the impact trauma has on our lives and collective well-being, shining a light on resilience, healing, and the transformative power of doing the inner work. I'm your host, Julie Lewin. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat with Julie. In today's episode, we are chatting with Nikki Nicholas, who is a seasoned coach specializing in guiding individuals through life's toughest challenges, from relationship transitions to career changes. And with over 17 years of knowledge and certifications in neurolinguistic programming and strategic hypnosis, Nikki helps clients clarify purpose, boost confidence and overcome subconscious barriers. So join us as we unpack burnout and what led Nikki to completely upending her life, starting again, and how she navigated that transition. And so welcome, Nikki, and thank you for joining us. So talk to me. What led you to upend your life and start a new life? And what I, I want to know about the inner journey of how you did all of that. So give us a quick intro and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of it. Perfect. So so essentially for me, I was just kind of living my life as I was um, from 16 years old on. Um, I was in a relationship with someone for 15 years, an amazing man. Um, and kind of over time, I was in that relationship. I was in a corporate job. I had bought a house. The market crashed, all this stuff. And I was kind of, to be honest, dealing with a lot of intense emotions, depression, that kind of thing, because I was like, why is my life not going the way that I had hoped it to be? Mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling fulfilled at my job. And again, this depression. Um, so going through a lot of really difficult times, um, I just, it all kind of culminated when I took um, my first in-person, I had taken tons of neurolinguistic programming courses previously online, but my first in-person course um, in the course, she had um, done like hypnotherapy on us as a class and neurolinguistic programming work. And so she had done so much work on us at a subconscious level that I just totally shifted. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, like I, it's like I saw somehow all of a sudden, like I feel like I'm in a box and I've been in this box for a long time and I need to get out of this box, but I don't know how. And I remember yeah. just like, realizing that I had to change my life and not mm -hmm. understanding it because my life to the outside world and to myself as per societal standards seemed like this perfect life. Why would I not want it? Yeah. And so I kind of did a lot of soul searching and over time realized everything needed to shift everything. And so so ended my relationship, ended my corporate job, moved from that house to another place with a new roommate, like completely uprooted everything. And it was during COVID as well. So I yeah. was like going into all that self-isolating, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so it was very, very difficult. And so that in, you know, in a nutshell was my spiritual awakening was, you know, I realized that I needed to make these shifts, but in making these shifts, it was terrifying. Like must have been very confronting everything everything yeah. every negative emotion that I had inside of myself was coming out because bubbling up yeah yeah like I had um essentially my entire life I had been with like a big family like there was five of us and mm. then I transitioned from that to my relationship and we had roommates we had lots of fun we had so many friends around us all the time and then it was like hey self-isolating in covid I ended up taking a year and a half off after leaving my job, meditating for 10 plus hours a day, just going internal mm. because I had been actually studying NLP and hypnotherapy and all that, the subconscious mind work for, well, since 2007, became a life coach in 2017, which is when this all shifted. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, in order to get past this, I have to go into all the trauma and I say trauma, but I don't even know like anything with a high impact negative emotion in any part of your life can become trauma, even if it's not a massive thing. That's exactly right. Could you explain a bit more about that? 
because people think that trauma has to be a really big major event and that they have to fix that but I have a perception I want to hear what your perception is about trauma like yeah how it's... does it happen and what what uh categorizes it as trauma yeah so so an example I like to use because for me recently like ever since this all happened one of the reasons it took me so long to actually get into this in the online world is because I was terrified of being seen yeah. And that's one of the things that I was going into in that year and a half of meditation was just why am I so scared to be seen and feeling into the emotions of it all. So the negative emotions would come up and I was going into fear of judgment. That was a big part of it. Mm. But as I looked into all of those things, I kind of went back in time and found the root causes, which I kind of always knew were there where it was like, um, for example, if I were, I was a shy kid. So yeah. I had an experience actually where there was, I was grade three, I just moved to a new town and I, you know, was getting along fine with everybody. But a month in, there was this, this one little girl in grade three with me and she was like one of the loser kids and she was being picked on out in the playground. And as that happened, I had had an experience in my past where someone was being picked on. And so I kind of wanted to I felt for those kinds of people yeah and so I kind of stuck my neck out and protected her in front of all the cool kids yeah but then from then on I was considered I was an outcast I was considered like a loser and all that kind of stuff and so that defined my fate up until high school from grade three mm -hmm. to high school in this small town and it's interesting because in that time I had a lot of like trauma, but it really is little things. It's like, I was always scared, for example, that these popular girls would be yeah, yeah stacked on top. Yeah. I was always scared that these popular girls, every time I heard someone laughing, I'd be like, oh my God, are they laughing, laughing at, at me? me? Yeah. And you know, it's trauma because for me, like that would go off and I would feel this horrible feeling within me and it would stop. The feeling would stop me. From acting the way I wanted to act. And see what you shy. just did there? Your shoulders came in and your chest caved in. Yeah, yeah. Like that that's um a physical response. Yeah, physiological. To even that memory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it um so so as I was growing up, as I was like in this small town, I, you know, you kind of have this identity of who you are. Mm. Um based on people who know you. And so, for example, like junior high, I would be, it's time to go speak in front of the class. And I would be like, mm. I did not want to speak in front of the class. And yeah. so I avoided that, like the plague as much as I possibly could up until, well, until I started doing this inner work. And like at work, same thing. I didn't want to go in front of people. I used to be terrified of speaking in meetings and then I started to pay attention to all of the subconscious prompts within me is what I call them. And so yeah. that is how I personally find the trauma or the neurochemical response, I call it. So essentially every time, every, every memory we have is tied to an experience from our past. Yeah. And if that experience had a really high impact emotion, like a really intense emotion tied to it, then that negative emotion or positive emotion for that matter will get lodged in your nervous system as a neurochemical response or a feeling in your body. And that's tied to the memory of that experience. Yeah. So you can essentially identify whenever you or wherever you have trauma from by thinking of a memory and then feeling where do you feel a negative resonance within your body. Mm. So that's essentially how I find it. But it really doesn't matter. Like you say, it's like it can be it can be a big experience like really intense experience um or it can just be something like you know someone was poking fun at you one day and you you took it to heart and yeah. or you know like maybe someone made fun of you for tying your shoes funny and suddenly yeah. you're scared to tie your shoes in front of people for the rest of your life so. yeah yeah well I remember I, I might have been 10 or 11 and I really was like the good girl the the good the good one yeah not that that's a that's a testament but I wanted to be good 
and and I think that was because I didn't want to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was really proud of myself. I'd got 10 out of 10 for spelling and because I'd been practising and we had this quiz and I came home and I was really excited and I said to my mum and dad, oh, I got 10 out of 10 for my spelling. And my dad thought he was being funny. He said, yeah, why didn't you get 11 out of 10? And that that loop stuck with mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. and it was like it doesn't matter how hard I work, mm-hmm. uh, it won't ever be enough. Yeah, But it yeah. didn't stop me. It just put me in this process of, just try try a bit harder, try a bit harder. Yeah, do a bit like perfectionism. More, do a bit more. I have to be good. I have to be better have, and better and I better. Have, do, I do have. I, I would say I'm a recovering perfectionist. So am I. So am yes, I. Yes. That, that story you just told totally speaks to me. I had yes. the same kind of thing. I remember specifically, actually, I was, oh God, like, oh, I must've been four or five, six, maybe four. Um, and same thing. It was like spelling and reading yeah. and stuff. And I remember my mom, she was like, okay, here, read this book. And I was reading it and I did like, I read it as she wanted me to. And she was like, oh, good job. Good job. You did so She was super pumped. And then, and I was like, I felt good. I felt great. And then, you know, a couple of weeks go by and, you know, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm not getting the same amount of praise. Right. And then- Right. And I noticed it and I was like, what is going on? So I worked harder. And then all of a sudden, I think it was like a month or two later, my little brother came in and it was his turn to learn. And suddenly he's like, obviously he was a year younger than me. And so he's starting to learn. My mom's like, Hey, will you read this one little part of the sentence? And he did this one little part, which was much less than what I did. But she suddenly goes, Oh, good job. The response I was looking for. Yeah. And, and within me, I'm like, what? Like, you know, yeah. like what? Like why 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 am I not good enough? Why is he getting all this praise and I'm not? And I didn't understand it. And so that just like you led me to be this perfectionist always having to do good and better and better and yeah. better. And essentially it's like is that trauma? It's like, well, it's a high impact experience emotionally for yes. the child and it's an incongruency in our minds where it's like the conscious mind is going, well, why, like I should be getting this the same as I was before, but your subconscious mind is feeling these feelings and, and tying them to the experience because it's, it's that incongruency of what we were expecting versus, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and there's physical trauma and there's mental trauma and emotional trauma. Mm-hmm. And the physical trauma we can see but we can't see the mental or emotional trauma. Yeah. That's a, that comes up with our triggers. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so um, what do you, like, what's your experience of helping people as a coach with the emotional and mental trauma? What, what do you do for them? Yeah. So as I was saying before, every memory or sorry, every experience from our past is created as a memory in our mind or a new neurosynaptic pathway, which simultaneously creates a neurochemical response in our body or a feeling that's tied to it. So for me, my favorite way to go in is through feeling. Yeah. So, so the, the mental side, the thoughts are, yeah. are typically from what I see prompted by the, the emotion or the neurochemical response or the feeling. So I'll go in through the feeling. I'll be like, okay, think of this memory. So actually, for example, right now, if you, let's do it with a positive memory. Um, Think of something that makes you really, really happy. Well, that was an interesting experience because I flashed immediately to standing on the edge of Niagara Falls. Oh, cool. I was just talking to a friend who lives there literally half an hour ago. That's really no. cool. So, Synchronistic. Well, maybe yeah. telepathy. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So when you think of that experience and how happy it makes you, where do you feel the sensation of happiness in your body? Oh, that's interesting. Like it's it starts in my chest and goes, it expands all the way out in my abdomen. Perfect. So it's a moving feeling. Yes. 
So, so that's one of the things that I define is whenever I talk to someone, I usually go through, uh, I'll, I'll do, do positive feelings just to kind of explain what I'm doing, but then we'll do negative feelings in order to go deeper into them to release them. But yeah, so, so it expands down. So if it had a color, what color would you say it is? Oh, okay. Red. Cause then you know why I just looked off and I went, this is so similar to what I do. It's that's uncanny. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And red. then perfect. So red and it's moving. And then is it a heavy or a light feeling? Uh, it's a light feeling. A light feeling. And well, so essentially, so that is how you code that specific experience of happiness. Yeah. And this, this is the kind of stuff it's, it's subconscious, like all of this, it's when we, when we look at it, it's like, oh yeah, that's always been there. You know, that's always like every single, every single emotion or feeling sensation in our body, we will recognize it because it's subconscious. It's been under our conscious awareness, our entire lives, but these aren't typically questions that people ask each other. No, And I like what you said that it's coding the emotion. Because I've never yeah. described what I do as coding it. Oh, okay. so that's yeah. that's interesting. Um, okay, so that's really interesting. So keep going. Yeah. So when it comes to the negative emotions, so if we were to find a negative emotion within you, so I don't know if I want to do that because I'll put you in a, a negative state. But but essentially what I do is we we describe what is the emotion specifically and then we go down. We kind of see, OK, given the usually I'll go in through like a problem that somebody's experiencing. Yeah. So, for example, if somebody wants to go to the gym and they just can't get themselves to actually do it, it's because yeah. they have something inside of them blocking them or a yeah. negative association tied to the gym. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, put yourself in the state where you are thinking about wanting to go to the gym. Where do you feel a negative resonance within you? And yeah. then feel into that resonance and describe it and then give awareness to it and then, you know, process it out in certain ways. But we also look at like, what is the pattern playing out? Because oftentimes if somebody is stopping themselves yeah. from like going to the gym, and they feel this there's negative emotion yeah. is a pattern. Exactly. That's when a subconscious block, I call it, which is that negative emotion that's stopping them becomes a negative subconscious pattern because it's like, hey, they're not going to the gym and then they feel bad. And typically when people feel bad about not doing what they want to do, that will cause them to, oh, I need to feel good. What will make me feel good in the easiest way? Oh, that bag of chips over there, you know? Yep, yep. And then I feel good because I did this thing. So yep. it's just playing out that pattern and kind of looking at where is the the linchpin? Where is that the crux of the issue? Yep. And, then and so you just that. have to pull that pin out. Exactly. You work very similar to how I work. Yeah, and that's cool. It's very cool because I'd say from all the people that I've worked with, your work is the closest to what I do. That's really cool. And we What's felt the... a resonance, didn't we? With Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'd love so... to hear more about like the specifics on or the differences, I suppose. In well, what the, I do yeah, me. yeah. So that would be really interesting. So, um. I don't start with the problem. I start with them looking at their holographic body. Okay, yeah. And yeah. seeing what's out of a line, like what what is there that shouldn't be there. Interesting. Yeah, and then I go in and we explore that and then we remove it. And then we put something else back in there. Mm. So I never mm -hmm. leave a, a blank blank space. Space. I put yeah. something else in there. So yeah, yeah. But it's very so cool. similar to what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And um and I kind energetic. of just created that. I heard someone speak and I thought, okay, I wonder how I can use that. And then I just developed my own way. Oh, yeah. But look, in saying that, I did do, I did study NLP, um, but I don't remember what I studied. So whatever mm. I'm doing now that's NLP, it's in my DNA and yeah, I have no it's, memory of my, what I studied. It's so funny that you say that because, so I started studying again, 
neurolinguistic programming back in 2007, hypnotherapy, and like several other modalities that are kind of intertwined, different levels of NLP, I would say. And then it wasn't until 2017 after that shift where I'm like, okay, I need to go internal and figure all my stuff out. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I I have all these tools in my arsenal, but let me just kind of, you know, spend some time meditating, which I had never done before. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to figure out what's going on. So I did. And as I started meditating, then I was becoming more mindful. So there's the mindfulness aspect, mindful of what was taking place. And really it's at an energetic side. A yeah. lot of people aren't aware of, you know, how energy works or whatever, but it's just your subconscious mind through sensations in your body. Um, yeah. And so I started paying attention to those sensations and the memories that were tied to them. And I was using neurolinguistic programming processes, but then I suddenly found that I didn't need, it, it was almost like those were too cumbersome. I didn't need that much. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, it's like, I... I can do this with a lot less and then a lot less and then a lot less and then a lot less. And then it's like, it's like, Hey, what's left over just yeah. the sensation, which is just energy. Yeah. And, and then it got to the point where for me, so I was using different techniques. Um, it, these are the techniques that I teach my clients, but within myself from, I guess the end of probably 2020 on. Sorry, okay. On. So you facilitate your own inner work. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, hearing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just kind of, I teach them. So the program that I do, um, I start out by releasing for them and then I teach them how to do it on their own so that they have those tools moving forward, Perfect. essentially. Which is what yeah. I do as well. That's amazing. Because I'm passionate about people feeling empowered about their health yeah. and well being, yeah. feeling like they have tools that they can use anywhere, mm -hmm. anytime. And no one needs to know what they're doing yeah. because yeah. it's all within. All in. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to come back, Nikki, back to when you started doing the inner work. What was that unfolding like for you? Because I'm sure there's people that are going to listen today to the episode and go, yeah, but I want to know how you started. Like what prompted you to even look within to start the inner work? Because mm -hmm. to me, the inner work is the number one thing that we're put on earth to do. Yeah. Me yeah. Too. So me I want too, to know 100%. what, what, how did you start that inner work journey so... to transform your life? So for me, it was completely out of necessity because like I had made this shift and the way I describe it, it's it's like the ground was ripped out beneath my feet because yeah. it was essentially my subconscious mind in that course that was like, okay, hey, you need to change your life. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. I just remember bawling my eyes out and being like, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? And so the thing is the, the, the person I was with, my, my partner, he was my rock. Yeah. And he was, he like amazing towards me. He, he, he treated me so, so, so well. And so it didn't make a lot of sense, but it was like, it's almost like I needed to be alone. I was terrified to be alone. I realized that I needed mm -hmm. to be alone. I needed to experience life in the ways that were hard because it was so easy to, you know, with this person who was like, like raising me up, lifting me up and helping me in every way and there for me in every way. And it sounds weird, but I was like, there was a part of me that it's like, I need to know that I can do this on my own. Because if I'm like an 80 year old woman and and he dies, right. I don't want to be doing it then. So here's the, I really want to unpack this because in society, and I'm not going to say everyone, but in society, people want to shield other people from mm -hmm. the challenging things in life mm -hmm. they want to like protect keep them, them safe yeah. from keep them safe from the hard side of life yeah yeah and they say they even say things like if I could do that disease or if I could do that challenge for you I would mm -hmm. because I don't want you to feel xyz 
the negative feeling. Because I know yeah. what that feels like and I don't want you to have to do that. Let me do mm-hmm. that for you. Mm-hmm. But what I'm hearing from you is that your partner actually did do a lot of protecting and shielding and and buffeting and protecting and yeah uplifting yeah and you wanted to actually experience the 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 empowerment of overcoming challenges and the yeah. hardest stuff in life and do you know what because that's how a diamond is created that is so yes yeah yes. bang on bang on yeah and it was, it was ultimately through fear for me because like, like I said, like I grew up with this loving, caring family, but it was the same way I was, I was like sheltered from the bad, you know, yes. they, yeah. Like my dad didn't want me and my family, like he, he moved us away from any potential harm, like a big oh, city. We went to a yeah. small town and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And it's like, and my real, my main thing was just thinking like, I don't want to be an 80 year old, 90 year old woman. And then he passes and I would like, what would I do? Yeah, yeah. I would not know what to do with myself at you, that time. You wouldn't have any street smarts. Yeah, I wouldn't have that, like the strength that I should have. Yeah. I mean, should, you know, but. Um, well, well, what you wanted to have. What I wanted to have and knew, knew I could have. And it's like, I know that I'm a strong person deep down internally, but it's almost like life was, it, I was just coasting along. It was mm-hmm. easy. I was secure. I was safe, but there was, but there it was, was just, boring, right? It was boring. Yeah. Like yeah, it was a lack were, of fulfillment. There was no challenges. There was. Yeah. Not okay. in the ways that I wanted them. Like, like specifically yeah. to my job. Like, so, so my partner and I actually did music promotion. So that was really, really fun. Yeah. We used to travel and do, do that all over like California, the States, yeah. you know, Canada. And that was amazing. Um, but in doing that, um, sorry, I just totally lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? Um, I, uh, I was talking about be- it being boring. And it then... being boring. So, yeah, so that was really exciting. That was really, really exciting. But then I had to come back to my nine to five job, which was safe and secure, giving me money. But yeah. I was not fulfilled. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I spending most of my days in this uh, uh, I I enjoyed what I did, but it was kind of soul sucking because I wasn't, I didn't feel fulfilled. I wasn't doing like what I'm doing now. I want to, what do you mean by soul sucking? Like if someone was listening and going, "Mm, what, what is that? What does that mean? Yeah. So essentially it's like, I always knew I wanted to be entrepreneurial. I always knew I wanted to have an impact in some way. I really always loved psychology, you know, mm-hmm. understanding the subconscious mind, that kind of stuff. And I knew that I was very, you know, capable and with it and and able to do the things that I can do now. But it's like I was keeping myself small. Mm-hmm. And every time, you know, there was there was a something to do at work where I'm like asked to do something. It's like, okay, I did it. And I'm I'm giving away my time, giving away my time. And the entire time I'm at work, I'm thinking, I wish I was working on my own thing, my own projects. I wish I was, you know, fulfilling essentially my life's purpose. And it's like this massive chunk of the day, most of every day, I was not fulfilling what my soul wanted to do, essentially. And what was that, Nikki? So I would say just whatever it is, how can I put it? I would say just honestly, the the entrepreneurial side of things, yeah. what I'm passionate about, you know, because yeah. I think that's what we're put on this earth for. We have certain gifts and skills and we can, you know, build those skills. Um, but it's like, what lights you up? What makes you really, really happy? And for me, it was like the entrepreneurial side of things and the, like I said, psychology, subconscious mind and helping people. Those have always been things also teaching but like all of those things are things that I loved. And I actually taught myself how to build websites and do online marketing, which is how Same. I got the job in the first place, really. That's exactly yeah, I what I did too. Yeah, yeah, I did. yeah, you kind of have to, don't you? It's, uh... You know, there's something about being able to do those things for yourself that's very freeing mm-hmm. and you know that you're not dependent on an external person. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. To 
take steps as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because you can do it yourself. Uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 And and you can make it the way you want it, essentially, right. instead of, okay, can you change this? Can you change this? Can eh, give up? And then you see what it looks like and you go, nah, I didn't no, that's not yeah. it. Yeah. So you yeah. have to change Let's it again. Yeah. Change the entire thing. Yeah. Um, but so I actually, so after I taught myself how to do those things, that's actually the role I ended up in, in corporate was building, you know, front end development and online marketing, which I really, really enjoyed. But like we were talking before, I really enjoyed teaching myself that. And I built, um, on my own seven websites that were bringing in lots of money, um, back in the day, like 07 to 2012 for for the other myself. Right. Yeah. For myself. So I was doing that, um, part-time in my yeah. personal time, but I was just yeah. working, working, working and ended up burning out. And- oh, okay. Let's talk about this because I think that burning out is actually the result of trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so I don't know about specific trauma for me, but. Well, I'm going to challenge you I and guess say that technically- the perfectionism. Yeah. It is the the overarching um, thing, like the the trauma sits in the perfectionism. Going back to you wanting so, to impress your mom, and so that led you to just like make the wheel run faster and faster. Yeah. So it like as you're speaking I'm like hey wait like I'm kind of like peeling the layers of the onion back so thinking about it it's like so at that moment in my life I I had bought the house um I was working the nine to five but it was I would wake up at 4 a.m I would get home at like 7 30 and have to go to bed at nine on a good day so I had like no time to myself and if it was a blizzard outside I'd have half an hour to myself And because I was commuting so much. And so I was pushing myself so, so hard. But it was like, so for me, it was I was looking at happiness on the horizon. If I just have my websites, you know, make a little more money, if I can do this, if I can do this, then everything will be better and my life will be perfect. And, you know, I'll be able to leave my nine to five job, essentially. Yeah. So looking at it, really, it's like it was an overcompensation for something yeah. that I didn't want to change, which definitely would have like the the trauma side of things where it's like, then it goes into my fear of being alone, which is why I stayed in that place. And my fear of not having money, which is why I stayed in the job. And like all of my fears were compounding yeah. in my life and making it so that I was, I felt stuck. And that's what led to depression. Yeah. And that I was just like you said, the perfectionism, I have to do, I have to do, I have to do in order to be happy one day, essentially. And did you feel like this adrenaline rushing through you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and yeah. I've pushing, experienced pushing, pushing. that as well. So as soon as yeah. I now feel that adrenaline, I'm like, no, mm-hmm. what what am I doing? What's going on? What are my thoughts? What am I, what have I committed to? what's happening here yeah and I can stop that really quickly now Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. before that that led me to cancer it led me to rotting my organs it led me to um you know not eating well and getting very thin and Mm -hmm. I didn't recognize that. I'm I recognize it really fast now, but yeah. I didn't talk to anyone. Mm-hmm. I didn't tell anyone that this is what was going on inside. Mm-hmm. I just kept functioning. Yeah, thinking but it's imploding normal. Imploding inside. Yeah, imploding yeah. inside. That's a good way to say it. I I got to the point of having panic attacks at work cuz And it's like the whole time I was at work, I'm like, I do not want to be here, but I have no choice. And it's that. That's it. That right there is when we tell ourselves we have no choice is actually a big warning sign because Mm -hmm. the reality is, Nikki, we all have choice. We just may not like the choices that we have. Yeah. But we all have choice. And what I... Doing nothing is a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. people think if I do nothing, that that's having choice removed from them. 
but mm-hmm. doing nothing is actually a choice. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And so you, you just like uh, opened that up for me when you said you felt like you had no choice. I felt like I've had no choice as well. And when I got that understanding, no, Julie, you do have a choice. You just don't like the choices that you have, mm-hmm. but you still have a choice. That was a, um, a game changer mindset shift for me. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. when I started being able to really heal inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and makes so a lot of sense. what was the moment, what was that shift for you when you felt like you did have a choice? Like, so it's, it's interesting because it took a long time to get to that point. So, yeah. so I was in this state, um, and it actually got to the point where the way I describe it is my brain broke where it was just too much. <laughs> I was, I was, so I had started a new role in the company and I was working with this person who was not a nice person and he would say horrible things. And I was dealing with, we had just rented our house out because we moved to the city um, so that I could be close. We could both be closer to our jobs, Mm. but then we had tenants who ended up being not good tenants. We were dealing with that. And it's like, I, I had, well, it was adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue syndrome. It was, I just had so much stress all the time. Like you say that adrenaline all the time, those panic attacks. And then I remember there's that new coworker who was just terrible and he was just being his normal self who was just not enjoyable and just mean. And I remember going home and I was talking to my partner and he was, I was recapping my day for him. And I was just, I remember looking at the ceiling and I was explaining like this and this and this and this are so hard. And he said this, and he said this, and he said this. And then suddenly my brain just went, nope, no more. And my mind just went blank Mm. and I couldn't think a single thought. Yeah. And from that point on, I call that my fog for, I would say a good 10 years. Wow. It, it took me, took me out of the game Yeah, and like it got better periodically over those years, yeah. but I still have it a tiny bit, very mild. Um, but then I, I, it was basically my body going no more. Like you, yeah. you can't, you can't do this anymore. And so yeah. in that moment, I felt like I had to give up everything. Like I gave up my websites that were bringing money in and I'm like, I just have to work my nine to five job, which I didn't want to do. And I pretty much spent the next probably like four or five years just looking at, okay, what is wrong with me? Because I went to doctors and they had no idea. They did all the tests you could imagine, lost my faith in them. Um, And I couldn't fix myself and they had no idea what was wrong. So they couldn't fix me. So I started looking into natural remedies and stuff like that. Right. The only thing that ever did end up working, getting me to the point I'm at now is where I just, again, in that 10 plus hours a day, year and a half, I was meditating profusely and found the different, like, cause it's all just energy. It's all just vibration yeah. within you. And, but at its peak, it was at the point where every person that I would, um, like even people that I worked with every day, I would forget their names or right. they say a sentence to me. And as soon as they finished the sentence, I would not know what they just said. Yeah. I would read a line of text. I would forget what I said. My short-term memory was gone and I was just always so tired. And mm-hmm. so that showed me, like you say, now you're able to catch the adrenaline as it yeah. happens and go, okay, no. So I'm yeah. in the same boat where it's, I'm very, I'm like hyper aware of what goes on within me. Within the body. Um, yeah. 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 And I do, I still have that, like with my business now, I am very go, 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 but it's because I love what I do. And so I do that a lot. That's That's different different. because you're doing, you love what you do, different frequency. Yes. Different frequency to I've got to go and do this nine to five. I've got to be here. I hate being here. Yeah. So it's like love and hate. Yeah, you're right. Two sides of the coin, still powerful energy, but one is destructive and one is uh, healing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you like your go, go, go? Do you? This is a this is a question that I this is what I used to do. Do you say to yourself, I 
we'll do that thing that I really want to do. And you mentioned before, and I'm not sure if it was on here or off off recording, about doing art. Oh, yes. Do you hold yourself to ransom to finish the the tasks that you've got to do in your business that you go, go, go before you let yourself do art? Or do you do the art and that gives you the fuel to go, go, go? Yeah. So, so art for me is like, I've actually put it on the back burner for a little while, um, for yeah, maybe a year because I'm so focused on this, but honestly, this is what I love so much that yeah. it's like, I'll find myself just this, that it's when I was at my nine to five, this is what I would pick up in my spare time. And so this is still what I pick up in my spare time, but actually speaking of which I am, I've been more mindful, much more mindful recently of, okay, is there anything that I want to do that is, you know, not related to this that I could. And I started watching, um, a show on Crave recently, just a reality TV show. And it's, yeah. it's been nice. Yeah. Um, and then we just actually today downloaded some video games for PC that I'm going to get back in, into that I used to play. So I'm kind of expanding a little more than I have previously, yeah. but typically I like so many aspects of what I do that, yeah. that typically I'm okay as long as I jump from thing to thing to thing. But I also right. schedule time for meditation or like take a bath or whatever, because I just really enjoy that. Yeah. But even when I'm doing that, I'm usually like meditating on different energy in me or something, or, <laughs> or I'll watch a training video on YouTube. But I, that's just what lights me up. But I'm more mindful, much more mindful now of, of the feelings. And if I feel like I'm doing it from a place of pressure or yes. I have to, I have to. That's, yes. Then that's a sign. Yeah. That's different, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah tangible yeah. differences within you more so because like, yeah, like I could like I have like three courses on the go, maybe four. So I'll jump from one to another to another to another. And but now I'm also, you know, throwing other stuff in the mix, too, which isn't, you know, as productive, but I still enjoy it. So, OK, that's if, what I was coming to other things yeah. that you do just because you enjoy it, yeah. not because it has a benefit to your business. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely more so these days. Um, right. Yeah, it just kind of worked out that I just really love all these things. So, hmm. <laughs> but those video yeah. games are going to be really fun. So would you say that you, um, you're creating a more balanced life now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's... um. Yeah, balanced and and really the discerning factor is how does it make me feel? Yeah, is that a question that you ask yourself regularly? Yeah, I think like not verbally, but just like I look to my feelings. Mm. Uh, most like I'm very, very, very aware of the way that I feel at all given points in time. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna ask you a question about energy hygiene. Okay. So this is something that Tash and I are really passionate about. And you've spoken a lot about energy and that we're energy. And I imagine that you are aware that we have our field and mm -hmm. our field can merge with other people's fields and we're all in the ocean of consciousness, etc. What do you do? to cleanse your energy and protect your energy? Um, so for me, I have always been, uh, maybe, maybe this is a different way of thinking of it than most people, but for me, I have actually in that year and a half, it was very much about going into my weakest weaknesses. So okay. ev every weakness within me. So when it comes to protecting my energy and stuff, I actually put myself like in the line of fire um, energetically in multiple situations. So when I left my job, I was like, okay, I am going to feel judgment, bring it on because I need to feel it in order to know what's going on inside of me. So that mostly, well, for myself too, because I needed to release it, but also so I can know how to release it for others in the future. Right. And so I purposely went into a position where I was going to feel tons and tons of judgment. And mm. so just going into that weakness, but 
so that's kind of been more my thing is like almost developing strength through moving through weakness so that I don't have to necessarily avoid negative energy. But at the same time, I don't, I don't need to be around that at the same time, like anymore, because that's not, mm. you know, the point for me anymore. Yeah. Um. So I do in just everyday life, like I would prefer not to be around people I don't like, for example, I won't be around them typically. But if I am, it's almost like I've released those whatever would be triggered and I can just have it roll off my back now because like I've gone into that weakness. I've gone into those challenging, difficult emotions. So, so it doesn't do really you, affect me. Are you ever, do you ever be sitting, minding your own business, like not even having thoughts and suddenly you feel all these feelings that you go, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely had that before. What do you do with that? So I did have that quite a lot, not so much anymore. And I think it's because I've gone into these things because again, being triggered, or maybe it's because I don't associate with the same kinds of people, but I definitely had that like from 2017 onward when I had like my spiritual awakening, um, where I started paying attention to energies and, mm. and I had a really good mentor who kind of explained energy really well to me. Mm. And we actually tested all those theories of setting each other energy and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was pretty fascinating what we, what we found. Yeah. Um, but specifically there were a couple people in my life where I would feel that negative, negative, negative energy. Um, and it was, it was specific to different like positions that I was in. And it's like in that moment, like I could feel it surrounding me. I knew it was there. And it's like, there was a shift in me where suddenly it's almost like I pushed it out or pushed my energy out so that it couldn't touch me anymore okay does that makes sense it does make sense and did yeah. you do that consciously or unconsciously I did that through meditation yeah, yeah. so very yeah, yeah. very consciously and deliberately because yeah. I'm like okay. how do I deal with this yeah and That's... I didn't know at the time yes yes and so what you've done is you've built neural pathways mm-hmm. when you're unconscious or subconscious actually starts feeling that it autonomically now will push out yeah, and that's why you're exactly. not feeling it that and is that's a what perfect practice way to say it does yes, and that's what yes, daily yes. discipline does yeah that's all yeah. and that was the point I'm so that I was glad wanting. you said that I'm so glad you said that because that yeah. just yeah opened up yeah absolutely that's exactly what it is yeah if I could explain it in another instance so in that year and a half when I was meditating extensively um so when I first started meditating, I would sometimes feel bored. Yeah. And then I noticed in meditation, I'm like, okay, boredom is just a vibration. It's just another feeling within me. So I'm like, what is this boredom trying to tell me? So I sat with the boredom and I just gave it all of my awareness. Mm. And as I did, I so one of the techniques I use is to amplify the feeling yes. because it's it's changing the neural pathway by doing yes. the opposite. Like give me more of this horrible yes. feeling as in I'm not running from it anymore, which is a yeah. different You're facing pattern. it. Yeah. Exactly. And so I did that and suddenly um, the, the vibration, the boredom, it dissipated. I find that it kind of like bursts, it dissipates. And then it was gone, just like all the way that I always do it internally. But then it was gone and then I could meditate and I wouldn't feel bored. And to this day, I have never felt boredom. Mm. And I've had that with tons of different, tons of different emotions, like cabin fever, stuff like that. That's why like it's been, yeah, we've had some pretty intense stints of snow here um, in Alberta. And uh, so I should be feeling cabin fever if I was like most people, but I haven't. I just feel great. Like I I'm fine. Yeah. Like I prefer to go for walks, but if you can't, you can't. Um, but it's because I've gone into the feeling of boredom, the feeling of cabin fever, all these different feelings, like you say, is you're, you're flexing that muscle. You are, yeah. you are allowing yourself to not have to do it consciously anymore. It's just not there anymore. So we have been talking, like we've had a really good chat. So wrapping up, what would you say to people um, that they can do internally 
to navigate their trauma. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's therapists and there's, there's external people, but we need to, we need to participate in the healing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. yes, external people are fabulous, but what would you suggest to people for the inner work that they embrace Mm -hmm. to, to move through trauma? Mm -hmm. So I would say, basically, if they have the way that they know they have some kind of trauma is because they'll have some kind of trigger outside of them that prompts a negative feeling. So if they think of the trigger or are in an experience where they experience the trigger setting an emotion off in them, focus on the emotion, go internal, just completely focus on the negative feeling and just Mm. get curious about it because even Mm. just getting curious about it is changing your viewpoint of the emotion exactly right which is yeah scratching the record exactly curiosity is your best friend yep and then just 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 explore the negative feeling because ultimately it is just a vibration it's just an energy it's just a sensation and this too shall pass Exactly. And give all of your awareness to it. You can give it love. I find that helps a lot as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's it. I actually do that with my clients. And I say to them, okay, now we've identified all of this. Now I want you to send it love and tell me what happens. Yeah. Oh, oh, and it's like a, oh, yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And it's funny too, because our, our initial inclination is not to give it love. It's usually to avoid it, to fight with it. Like I have so many client sessions where they'll, they'll be facing something and I'm like, okay, now what do you, what are you doing now? And they're like, I'm fighting with it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. You want to give it love. Just, you know, talk to it, whatever. Yeah. 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 So I would say, honestly, just, just feel it as fully as you possibly can Mm. even amplify it and give it love and it will pass. It a hundred percent will pass. I love that. So Nikki, how can people find you? Uh, so they can find me on my website. My website is Nikki Yeah. Um, and then also I have a link if you would like to put it on to show notes. Will, yeah. Um, okay, perfect. So for a free gift, it is, um, essentially just a video video kind of training, just like 10 minutes long on how to find basically what a subconscious block is, where it comes from and how to find different ones within you. So yeah, yeah free to whoever wants it. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, but uh, yeah, you. I'll, awesome. I think you'll have links to those. We will, show notes. we'll have links. Perfect. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. This was really, really fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Let's Chat with Julie Lewin. We hope you were inspired by Nikki's incredible journey of overcoming burnout and starting a new life where her passion guides her rather than feeling stuck and in a place where she feels she has no choice. If you enjoyed the episode, like and follow our podcast wherever you listen so it can get into the hands of people who need it most. Also, your insights shape the direction of our podcast. So please let us know if there are topics that you want us to talk about and if there are any experts that we should invite. Thank you for listening. And remember, the journey to self-discovery and growth is an ongoing process and it continues beyond the airwaves. Until next time, may you find courage, peace and magic on your own unique path.